Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha! I'm Melissa Ryan, a Hiki no student from Castle High School in Windward, Oahu. And I'm Desiree Kanui, a Hiki no student at Nanakuli Intermediate School in West Oahu. Over the past four episodes, our colleagues have presented stories that have been nominated for the 2017 Hiki no Awards. But stories are not the only Hiki no projects that deserve recognition. There are other elements of a Hiki no show that develop a variety of skills in students who create them. For instance, there are franchise or how-to pieces. These are short videos, usually not much longer than a minute, that take the audience through the steps of how to create something or successfully complete a task. Then there are factoids. These are the short vignettes that appear between the stories and give audiences a glimpse into different aspects of school life. They are the glue that holds the shows together. Without factoids, a half-hour episode of Hiki No would be nothing more than a random sequence of stories. Factoids give our shows structure and cohesiveness. Then there are cinematic arts that are essential to the Hiki no experience, both for our student producers and for the viewers of the show. Hiki no is all about visual storytelling, and for that reason, we recognize achievements in cinematography and editing. Today, Desiree and I are going to present the nominees in these three non-story categories. We'll also tell you the criteria the judges will be using to score each of the nominees. As is the case with all categories in the Hiki no Awards, a panel of judges made up of veteran journalists, broadcasters, and filmmakers will score each nominee based upon a set of very specific and strict criteria. The judges' scores will be added up and the nominee with the highest score in the given category will be declared the winner of that category. The winner of each category will receive $1,000 worth of production equipment for their school's media program. The Hiki no Awards are school, not individual awards. Winners will be announced on our special Hiki no Awards show Thursday, March 23rd at 7.30, right here on PBS Hawaii. Here are the judging criteria for our first category, Best Franchise Piece. Does the task or process being presented have a cultural or social significance? Is the narration script clear, concise, and thorough? Is it compelling? Does the narrator speak clearly, with good diction, and with expression? Is the activity shot from a variety of angles in order to make it visually interesting? Is the camera showing us exactly what we need to see in order to understand every stage of the process? Does the viewer learn something? So, let's see how the nominees measure up to these criteria. Nominated for Best Franchise Piece, Hana K through 12 School for Tea Leaf Print. Key Coppola is the art of stamping using the stem of the key or tea leaf. The stamping technique has been used to symbolically share the kauna or hidden meaning of a story. To share this art with you, we will use materials such as acrylic paint, scissors, and a brown paper bag. Before you start, you want to have an idea of the design you would like to create. First, pick some leaves from the tea leaf plant. Try to pick a variety of sizes according to the stem of the tea leaf. With a pair of scissors, cut the stem of the key leaf so it has a firm edge. Next, crumple up a piece of brown paper bag until it is soft in texture. Then uncrumple the square and flatten it. Using the scissors, cut the size of the paper you want depending on what you are making. When you are done preparing your canvas, squirt a little paint on the scratch piece of paper for you to work on. Next, apply the paint to the edge of the stem of the tea leaf and press firmly on the paper bag. If your edge becomes too messy, just cut the undesired part off. Be creative and use your imagination to design. You can use this technique to stamp on any type of material. This is Anela Lono Kaina from Hana School for Hikino. Kalani High School Thaumatrope. Have you ever wondered how your favorite animated movies come to life? Animators need to create about 24 to 30 still pictures to make one second of moving film. 
Luckily, we have the help of computers to draw images. Before that, artists had to draw them by hand. In the early 1800s, Dr. John Paris, a French physicist, created the thaumatrope using optical illusions to develop modern animation. The word thaumatrope has a Greek origin, combining thauma, meaning wonder, and tropes, meaning turning. The thaumatrope works by using multiple images that blend into a single picture. This illusion is called persistence of vision and is used for motion perception in most animated films. These are the supplies you'll need to make your very own thaumatrope. You can get creative and draw two separate pictures that will merge into one. For the thaumatrope to work properly, be sure that your drawings are opposing each other. So when you flip the circle, the images collaborate. Attach and twirl the strings to see the whole picture in action. And enjoy your very own homemade animation. This is Maya Kiave Costa from Kalani High School for Hiki No. Kapa'a Middle School for 10 things to do when you're not on your smartphone. Staying on phones and other technology too long has become a problem for many people. The average person checks their phone over 46 times a day. That's according to Deloitte Global. I know, I know, keeping streaks with your friend and sending pics with dog ears are fun. But when you're doing that, you're missing out on many things, like nature, fun experiences, and activities. This is a problem that needs to change. So here are 10 fun and even useful things to do without your phone. 1. Interact with someone. How about that kid in your class you've never talked to before? Strike up a conversation. How's your day? How are you doing? 2. Help your community. Whether it's picking up trash or collecting clothes for your local shelter, every little bit counts. 3. Try out a new hobby. If it's joining a sport, learning an instrument, or stamp collecting, make it happen. 4. Volunteer at a nearby animal shelter, like the Humane Society. You can spend time with the animals, learn how to take care of them, and they'll become accustomed to people. Number 5. Attend a local group activity. Maybe your neighborhood hosts a get-together every week? You can make new friends and have a really great time. 6. Explore the world around you. Check out that hike you've heard of. If you're stumped, look at Google Maps for a place to discover first, then put away your phone and go on the adventure. 7. Write a short story. Is there anything on your mind? Maybe you can turn it into a mini novel. Let your imagination run free. 8. Take something old and upcycle it. Have some old jeans? You can turn them into shorts, a purse, or add patches to it. Get creative. Number nine, go to the library. Check out that book you've been wanting to read. Ask a friend or a family member for a suggestion before you visit. Number 10, sing a song in the mirror. Say hello to the newest star. Get off your phone and try out these ideas and you'll definitely feel like you lived a little more. This is Kylie McEwen from Kapa'a Middle School for Hiki No. Kauai High School for Hurricane Protection. In this year alone, Hawaii has already been able to luckily avoid nine different hurricanes. However, regardless of this luck, it is always important to understand the five P's towards hurricane protection to ensure your safety in the event of an actual storm. The first step towards your protection is to pay close attention to your local news to be informed on the track and state of the storm. The second step is to ensure to pack your supplies. Store at least three days worth of food and water for each member of your household. In addition, make sure to store all necessary medications flashlights, first aid supplies, and a battery-operated radio. The third step is to pick your most important possessions, which may include important documents and special keepsakes. The fourth step is then to prepare your house before the chaotic winds. You may close up all windows and doors with plywood. The final step is to know your plan of action during a hurricane. Through these steps, you will develop better habits to protect yourself against future storms. Remember, you are not only limited to these forms of preparation because there's always room to do more. Keeping the community safe one step at a time. This is Casey Imato from Kauai High School for Higino. Molokai High School for Text a Tip. Molokai High School's resource officer along with Maui County are now using a new school safety and awareness program called Text a Tip. Text a Tip allows a person to stay anonymous when they report an incident 
that may seem dangerous or wrong, such as bullying, fights or pre-fights, vandalism, theft, or drug use. A student can text a tip to a cell phone number specific to the Molokai High School campus or on or off campus. The tip goes straight to the school resource officer, the vice principal, and the principal. If your school has the text a tip program, follow these simple steps to ensure you always have the number. Step one, open contacts. Step two, input your school's text a tip number for easy access. Step three, add a new contact called text a tip. This way you always have the number in case you need it in an emergency. This is a great way to keep the campus safe and it allows students to report an incident without their friends or school administration knowing because the person who sends the text stays anonymous. Pacific Buddhist Academy, offering incense. Oshoko, or offering of incense, is a daily practice in many Buddhist households. To Oshoko, Buddhists need a butsudan, or family shrine dedicated to the Buddha, incense, matches, charcoal, nenju, or the beads that keep practitioners mindful of the Buddha, and various other implements that are placed within it, including a representation of wisdom and compassion. Care should be taken when lighting the charcoal. Make certain to have an adult present. Then, place the charcoal in the bowl. Take a pinch of incense and sprinkle it on the charcoal. Put your hands together in gasho, or the gesture signifying the oneness of Buddha and all beings. Take a deep breath. Take it all in. And bow deeply. Step back. Right foot first, then left. With feet together and hands at your sides, bow. Now you're ready to begin the day. Namo Amida Butsu. This is Casey Amato from Pacific Buddhist Academy for Hikino. Congratulations to all the nominees in the best franchise category, and best of luck to all of you at the awards show. Now, let's move on to what the judges will be looking at when they score the nominees in our next category, Best Factoid. The on-camera and voiceover presence of the hosts, their diction, articulation, expressiveness, and confidence. The production quality of the host shots and accompanying visuals or B-roll. Do the visuals establish a sense of place or being there? Do they capture the essence of what is being discussed in the narration? The creativity and writing quality of the factoid scripts. Did the factoid give you a sense of what it's like to be a part of the school or community? So, let's see how the nominees stack up against the judging criteria. Nominated for Best Factoid, Hana K-12 School for School History. We're back at Hana K-12 School in East Maui for a special edition of Hiki no, dedicated to the Hawaiian value of Maalama, to care for, to protect, to maintain. Our school was established by Hawaii's Department of Education over 100 years ago in 1912. Today, it serves approximately 350 students from kindergarten through high school. Nearly 80% of the students are of Hawaiian or part Hawaiian ancestry, reflecting the native culture that has been continuously maintained in Hana for centuries. Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Solar Trees. We're here at Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea on Hawaii Island. Throughout this episode of Hiki No, we learn about the people who keep our school looking beautiful. TJ Kalono Pio, class of 1994, is our head of maintenance, but also Simon Mason. His latest job was setting the foundation for our two solid trees, which stand 14 feet above Kennedy Square. These two solid trees have a 30-foot wingspan and collect nine kilowatts per day, completely sustaining our student union. Konawana High School for Wildcats. We're on the campus of Konawana High School on the Kona side of the Hawaii Island. This area is known as Wildcat Country and we proudly bleed green. But Konawana's mascot has not always been the Wildcat. Konawana was established in 1921 and known as the Blue and White Knights. 
In the early years, the Kona line of football players could not afford uniforms and were given old ones from the University of Hawaii at Manoa and were referred to as the Green and White Knights. But in 1928, the young broadcaster Ezra Crane announces on KGU Radio how the Kona Waina football team displayed a never give up attitude and made the comment, those kids play like a bunch of wildcats, and the rest is history. Mililani High School, Red Dirt. We're back at Mililani High School. This may be known as the land of the mighty brown and gold, but Mililani is infamous for its red dirt. High levels of iron oxide in the dirt turns it red from the rust. This rich soil, once nourished pineapple and sugarcane crops. But now, the dirt is notorious for the red stains it leaves on clothes, cars, and buildings. This is why at Mililani, red is the color of choice for roofs and lockers, to honor the red dirt and to camouflage it. President William McKinley High School for School Spirit. We're back at President William McKinley High School, home of the Tigers in the heart of Honolulu. One of the greatest traditions of McKinley is the school spirit and pride. From the basement beginnings of the old Fort Street Church to Princess Ruth's Palace to the Baratania and Victoria Street location, McKinley High School continues to show her pride and spirit despite its several past locations. In 1923, McKinley High School found her permanent home at the current King Street location. Riley's students helped fund the construction of several buildings and created a synergy around campus that cannot be explained in words. It is because of this tradition of school spirit and pride that many alumni recognize the prestige that comes with being a graduate of McKinley. Congratulations to all the best factoid nominees. It's an honor to be nominated in this category, an honor that each of you deserves. Exactly. Now, let's take a look at the judging criteria for our final category today. Best Achievement in Cinematography and Editing. Does the lighting, shot composition, camera angles, and overall look create a mood or express an emotion appropriate to the story being told? Was the nominee able to shoot and edit action sequences that flowed naturally and enhanced the telling of the story? Was the pacing of the editing, fast or slow, appropriate to the mood and emotion of the story? Did they capture the magic, beauty, and character of the people and places they photographed? Did they tell a visual story? Now, let's look at scenes from the stories nominated in this category. Nominated for Best Achievement in Cinematography and Editing, Kapa'a Middle School for Junior Lifeguard. Asha McGinnis is one of the top junior lifeguards in the state. The 13-year-old from Kapa'a took first place in the state junior lifeguard competition's most grueling iron guard category. Learning how to save someone's life builds self-confidence. You know what to do in certain situations and you know that you can help people and you're not afraid to put yourself at risk because you know that everything is going to be okay. During the program, the competitors spend their summer days working hard in the heat and training with intensity in the sand. For these teens, discipline is key. I'm mainly a swimmer, but I always know that if I want to do well in junior lifeguard, I have to practice and I have to practice hard. Building physical fitness, a competitive spirit, and strong support system, Kauai's Junior Lifeguard Program teaches our youth how to dive head first into any challenge that lies ahead. Maui High School for Tourette. <laughs> I just like sports, that's what I like to do. I'm not very academically good. For 13-year-old Bristol Dempsey, cheerleading is what makes her jump for joy. It's fun, it's really hard. It's very hard though, especially because everyone in my cheer team has already done cheer before, and I haven't. However, cheerleading is not the hardest thing she has to deal with. It was Christmas night. We had had a wonderful Christmas with family, and then that night she started coming down the stairs, and she lost all control of muscle function. She collapsed to the ground, and she couldn't stand up. After several doctor exams, Bristol was diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. After a year at home, Bristol found that less stress meant less tics. Armed with calming techniques like meditation, she felt comfortable enough to return to public school this year. The freshman has entered Maui High with a new outlook and a new uniform. I'm in cheer and I'm doing really good and I'm not having... A lot of my tics went down, my stress and stuff, it all went down and it's, I'm excited for school. For anyone who has a disorder, Tourette's, don't let it stop you and just be happy with your life because you have it for a reason and you know what, it's going to lead to something great. Moanalua High School, Equestrian. 
I love being around horses. Just the energy and the kindness in their eyes, the way that they look at you, the way that they understand you. They are very kind souls and I just, I just want to work with them for the rest of my life. But I think horseback riding means so much to me now at this point because I've put so much into it. I've put hours and hours and a lot of sweat and tears into horseback riding. Horseback riding is beyond who she is. It, it, it's literally beyond being a part of her. It is her. It is my sport. It is my passion. It is my hobby. It is my life and will always be my life. Sacred Hearts Academy for IUCN. My parents always taught me the Ololo no Eao, He Li Kaina, He Kawa Ke Kanaka. The land is a chief, man is its servant. So I've always seen my role as being here to take care of the earth and, and help it however I can. In Hawaii, the notion of taking care of its natural resources is rooted deeply within its people. And just as it is on a global scale, this belief grows from the seedlings of knowledge planted in the minds of today's youth. Something echoed at the 2016 IUCN World Conservation Congress. We believe in the power of youth, um, that not only they um, have the physical capacity to transform and restore areas, but also just the heart and the, the brilliance to really create amazing ideas that it can change our world. From removing invasive species and replanting native vegetation in lush Makiki Valley, the global community gathers here at the Hawaii Convention Center to learn that the tools of conservation are not limited to shovels or gloves. My hope is that the experiences of young people with the experiences of people that have been around a little bit longer and have been doing this work will be inspirational to both sides and that young people will feel an opportunity to uh, commit to making our planet better. As the next generation of leaders, it is important that youth continue to make the world a healthier, better place, not only for themselves, but also for those who will come centuries later. Why not high school for parental guidance required? I got into wrestling because of my cousin and my dad. I thought that it will make him proud. I'm her father. Kima Hamilton is a former wrestler and a man of very strong words. We're very close, but we argue a lot. Making a commitment not just to yourself, but to the team. I remember it's still a team sport. Studies have shown that parents who motivate their student athletes too hard can put them on a collision course with high levels of stress and other forms of abuse like drugs or alcoholism. This overbearing relationship persists and the child doesn't feel that the parent is listening to their concerns, it can actually cause significant problems in the parents and the child's relationship. It's something that Kiwa and Anwu wrestle with every day. We argue and everything, but it's part of the relationship we have because he was a wrestler himself. <sighs> and he pushes me because he knows the struggle. There's a difference between overbearing and old school. I'm old school. And so far, old school seems to have Anu on a course to success. I benefit a lot from him because if it wasn't for him, then I wouldn't be placing in states. I wouldn't be doing like all the good things that I'm doing right now. This is Jasmine Kalik show from Waianae High School for Hikino. Congratulations to all the nominees in this category for your stunning cinematography and spot on editing. If you want to see who wins in the categories we presented tonight and all of the categories in the 2017 Hikino Awards, tune in to our special awards show Thursday, March 23rd at 7.30 right here on PBS Hawaii. <laughs> Next week at this time, fellow Hikino students Kukui Raymond and Noah Famuina will present the nominees for Best Overall Story, Middle School Division. Congratulations once again to all the nominees in the 2017 Hikino Awards. You're all winners in our book. Aloha kako.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.